Welcome to Shamba Shape Up Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hardworking farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmer's experience on the Shamba Shape Up Uganda! Uganda. Peter. Oh, welcome. Uh, thank you. Please. Uh, yes. My welcome. name is Agi. Oh, I am you. from? Shama Shep Up. Yes. yes. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please, please. Hello, Hello. 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 How are you? Yes. You are fine? Yes. We have gone. <laughs> Hi. That was wild. I guess they wanted to be part of the fun. <laughs> Peter Chifuse is the owner and principal of Victory, a primary school in Namungari village, Iganga district. He's a teacher by career. Only he chose a second line of work for himself seven years ago, full-time farmer. Two very different professions. I began the school, but you know, it became a bit expensive to be buying all the inputs. So we said, no, why can't you go next to a mail and begin growing our own food? The two are inseparable. Because one, in the school, we need food. In the school, we need eggs for the learners. In the school, we need the milk. You get it? So it's so funny, so interesting that now the two are almost moving together. It's not an easy task to feed 700 children. Fortunately, Peter had some land and he comes from a family of farmers. So he wasn't a complete novice. He has chicken from Germany and Turkey. We'll see if they are good layers. He also has bananas, he has maize, and he has just started a sweet potato project. And of course, he has challenges. We will deal with them. So make way for our experts. Here we come. <laughs> Let's start with the chicken. It's Peter's main focus. It feeds the school and brings in some extra cash. At least it used to. Peter used to have 5,000 chickens, and their eggs were helping him pay off some debts. But then, COVID struck. The demand for eggs was not there because most of our customers are in urban centers, even schools. But schools were not operating. People in urban centers had been pushed back into their villages, you see, and they were not working. So that ability to actually buy the eggs was not there completely. So that's why some of the bus were sold off at a takeaway price. There's still some 1,900 chicken left, and 690 of them are still laying eggs, giving Peter 12 trays per day. But that's 10 trays less than before, because an outbreak of infectious bronchitis broke down the production even more. Let's see if our expert from CKL, Michael Moll, can turn the wheel of fortune for our farmer. And he first hones in on their feet. The decline in eggs, as you mentioned, you realize it is the IB yeah, exactly. and other things. And uh, there is what we call the feed quality as well. You know, you as a farmer, you are feeding your birds very well. Mm. But do you get to know the quality of feed you're giving? Uh, actually, we buy concentrates, mm -hmm. and these are imported from yeah. outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, with my with my brand, yeah. we procure it from the for local maize mills. Mm -hmm. You source from different places, mm. so the quality may not be the same all through. It's now, true. if the quality of the feed changes then you get to realize that the birds also tend to be stressed with the quality of feed, oh, even it's... the origin. Because of just the smell, they'll get to smell, this food is not what I ate yesterday, and it also stresses them. They won't lay as much. When you're storing your feeds, there's also what you call the proper storage of the feeds, yes, such that the quality is not affected. This maize bran gets to be uh, contaminated by what we call aflatoxins, and even the fungi, all the molds, they get to grow on the maize from the process of harvesting and even at the point of storage. Yes. Also for the sources, once you're getting the sauce and you're storing the feeds in your stores, if they're on bags, put on a pallet and not put on uh, the floor because they get to be dumpy and the dampness increases the amount of 
toxins Toxin or let's say the moles yeah. which are growing in the buds. Please, please. So you'll find your buds are laying very well, but maybe if the toxins grow too much in their system, Winter then there is a total decline in production in of eggs. Yes. So you can get to eradicate the toxins by always using a toxin binder in your feeds. Mm -hmm. There is a toxin binder called T5Z. It is a very good product in terms of binding all the toxins. Mm. For the toxin binder, which a poultry farmer you should never miss, two kilograms of the toxin binder in one ton of feed. In one thousand. Yes, in one thousand kilograms. Yes. It also helps. You ever found you're mixing your feed and there is some caking? Exactly. Like the feed is supposed to be in particles, but it cakes. It cakes. So it's this one helps. Okay. It yeah. has an anti-caking okay. agent. Because of storage, storage problems, is that it cakes? It cakes. Yes. So this one helps a lot okay. to reduce on the caking problem that their feeds okay. may be having. What about water? Peter is using basins instead of drinkers for his chicken, and I know that's a no-no for Michael. When we're using the basin is too much on the floor. Oh. The birds tend to make the water more dirty. And you want to avoid that. Once you're having such, then you are having a much more risk of diseases exactly. as compared to whether you're using the raised uh, drinkers. drinkers. So yes, I understand where you're coming from because of expense and whatever you, mm. but you may be incurring more in terms of treatment, which you would have used in terms of using the better drink. Oh, yes, no, yes. I get it, I get it. Because you see, the quality of the water is also as important, yeah? Yes. <laughs> so whether you're getting it from the well or from government, yes, the yes. water has to be free from all bacteria. We understand the well is more of a mm. stagnant water mm. and they tend to breed a lot of, say, bacteria and other uh, infections like mm. IB, IBS, they yes. tend to breed a lot in such areas. So it is important to at least always sterilize your water. Yes, you sterilize your water by using a disinfectant. Mm. So there's a disinfectant called cuposide, which is a very ideal disinfectant you can use in the drinking water. This is cuposide, yeah? And we say mm. for every 300 liters of water, you get to put 10 mils of the cuposide disinfectant in the drinking water. Okay, we took care of the chicken. Now, on to the crops. Peter has planted bananas on two acres. Again, he wanted to stop buying them from outside and feed Matoke to his students. For us here in Iganga, not many people have bananas, have plantations. So what we have, we buy from the West, you see? So it's very expensive. But if it meant picking from our own garden, it's far, far cheaper. We save a lot. But a mysterious disease has hit his bananas and Peter's plan has fallen flat. He isn't getting much out of his plantation. So we had to bring in our expert from Makere University, Charles Lugolovi, to enlighten us. Yeah, actually, this is what I wanted to show you. My God. The whole garden is totally affected and uh, it's almost being wiped out. Sure. Uh, actually, all through, just as I was saying this one, it's totally finished from the other side up the end of the chamber. Uh, these are one of the, the diseases which reduce the production as far as bananas are concerned. It is called banana bacterial wilt. There's no medicine for this. This is a bacterial disease, close to virus. When it comes to bananas, ripening has to start with the, the cluster which formed first. Yes. But when the, the ripening starts from down, from down, going up, or being random, yes, please. there's always a question, why did it start like that? So premature ripening of banana fruits, that's one indicator, okay? Two, yellowing of leaves, and at the same time they snap down. Yes. Then scorched leaves. When you look at uh, this plant, okay, the leaves, the way how they match out, now they're looking old, but it was, it's not old because of age. No. They all died because of the disease. Please. Then you'll also see that uh, the male bud, it may wither and dry completely. That one also is an indicator that that plant is affected. Exactly. Now, time. how does the plant get that kind of disease? Oh, when a garden yeah. tool, like the panga or the hoi, cuts on uh, a diseased plant. That's elsewhere. Elsewhere. And that uh, same moment or some, that very time you come and cut on this one. Which is normal. Which is normal. That means you have already move the disease or the nutrient from one point to, to another. another. Then also some bees. A bee can move uh, between 3 to 12 kilometers. Wow. So it meaning that if there is a diseased plant within that range of distance, automatically it, it will... It can easily be transferred to exactly. another plant. So what can we do? 
about your case, what have you been doing in case so that you can stop that disease? It's like I had no option, no solution. You get it? Because if it meant going to the shops, maybe I buy the drugs, I come and probably spray or otherwise it could mm. work. But we tried out with, with our farmers around, but it couldn't, it couldn't help. So I said no. My plan B was making the place rest okay. for some time. Yes. Then like after two or three years, I come and establish another plantation. Mm. What you have to understand is how can I prevent it without even destroying the garden. So what you have to do is, one, if I remove a diseased plant, can the young one stay healthy? I've you remove been, the diseased one. And okay. then the others are safe. Yes. Mm. Oh, I think now that's where the science is. <laughs> the moment you find any symptom like I've mentioned, yes, please. please cut that plant down, mm -hmm. chop it, okay? chop it and bury it far from the main plant. And after that, we will uh, clean or our sanitize our tools. or flame our tools. You can either use fire or jig or ethanol or spirit. Okay. Secondly, you, you get a forked stick and break off all the male buds 50 centimeters away from the last cluster. cluster. The symptoms will keep on occurring until mm. they disappear anymore. Completely. So what you're trying to say, should we keep on doing the scouting? Exact scouting every now and then, every now and then, yes. Peter? Yes, please. What uh, do you feel right now? I'm happy that there is a hope the plantation can survive mm. as long as I go by what he's telling me. Yeah. So I'm happy to hear that, doctor. Okay, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Peter. To stop the banana bacterial wilt, scout your garden regularly. Identify the diseased plants. Cut them down, chop them into small pieces, and bury them far from the main plants. And afterwards, don't forget to clean your tools either with fire, spirit, or jig. Carissa has been busy shaping up Peter's chicken house. He has given it a thorough scrub, and with the help of Michael Omol, our expert, he has put in proper drinkers filled with disinfected water. Michael also added polythene sheets around the hatching boxes because chicken like to lay eggs in darker places. So it's time to reveal the results to our farmer. So, Peter. Yes, please. Aha, uh -huh, come in. Yeah. Do you like this? Wow, 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 <laughs> wow. This is great. Yes. This is great. Wow, 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 wow. I've liked it. And we have I've some more stuff for Peter <laughs> after the break. Please. <laughs> come <is> okay. <laughs> Frob, that looks like Karis. Agi, that is Karis. And what is he doing in there? How should I know you're the one who tells him to go and do I stuff? I did not send him, not this time. We are in Namungarwe village in Iganga district and we're visiting Peter Chifuse, the principal of a primary school who became a full-time farmer seven years ago. We've seen how to protect his chicken from diseases and showed him how to tackle the banana bacterial wilt on his matoke. We will now look at his maize and get rid of a pest and a weed. And introduce him to a new crop, the orange-fleshed sweet potato. Uh, yes. Oh, Caris, thank you so much. These are beautiful. And that's so thoughtful of you. Ah, uh, I mean, I'm beautiful. But his... This is a weed. What's wrong with you? How do you know it's a weed? What do you mean, how do As I As in, know? how do you know? Internet. That's what I thought. Caris, thank you. Peter's farming is all about feeding his school. That is 700 children, day in, day out. He wants to diversify as much as possible and give them a balanced diet, but posho remains the staple food, and recently, maize flour prices have skyrocketed. A kilo of maize flour, for now it's going almost for 3,000 shillings. Actually, it's between 2,500 and 3,000, depending on the quality. Feeding these learners here, it's like lunch alone, we use 80 kilograms. That's lunch alone. As of now, it's very difficult. Peter's planted maize on four and a half acres, and until two years ago, he was getting 20 bags of 100 kilograms per acre. He had no complaints, but now he only gets five bags, if he's lucky, that is. So what happened? Of course, Dr. Moses Kaira from the National Agriculture Research Organization, NARO, has answers. Wait, where are they? They're just inspecting the maze. Oh, <laughs> Peter, 
Peter? Yeah, yeah. You're there. We are here sorry, with, with doctor. Me. No, yeah, it's here. okay. Yeah. <laughs> please, please. Oh, you were talking already? Yeah. You got me the doctor. Doctor, what have you seen? Yeah, I've identified two major problems uh -huh. in this garden. Mm. There's an infestation of the fall armyworm. Something like this. Mm -hmm. Guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've also identified uh, an infestation by Striga. This is the Striga plant. Striga. And these Striga. are symptoms of Striga. It's hey. drying. Oh. And of course, both affect the productivity. The, product. the fall armyworm, mm -hmm. it is a, a larva which is destructive, which uh, grows into uh, a, a moth or a butterfly. A butterfly, yes. And when the butterflies come, they fall like... Oh, like an army. And even the, the weevils they produce, they are also an, like an army in attacking oh. the maize. The fall armyworm attacks maize when it is just about having about three leaves, when it has just germinated. Oh. It starts from that stage. The larva can enter the stem of the plant. It eats the pollen, this pollen, which oh. the plant produces, yes. and therefore affects pollination and formation of the cob. So you'll have a cob without grains. Without grains. Oh. The larva is the most destructive. Mm. It comes from an egg within two to three days. Two and days. a moth can produce to as high as 2,000 eggs. One? One. And those larva can live for six weeks feeding on your, destroying your maize. So it's a very, very big problem. For the and uh, many farmers are using chemicals. But chemicals are very expensive. It's true. I came one weekend to check on the garden, but all of it was covered, including my neighbor's garden, so we couldn't control. We went and got a chemical and just sprayed. Actually, a liter, it was going for 15,000. Actually, half a liter, 15,000. So a liter is 30,000. It's 30,000. Okay. That, that is very expensive. Some of the chemicals go as high as 50,000 per liter. Per liter. And you spray many times, so it. you may even go to uh, buying two liters for an acre. But there are other methods which are very good mm. and very user friendly. That is what we have uh, the push and pull. Push, push and, and pull. pull. We plant a, a crop which is preferred by the moth to lay in the eggs. The napier grass okay. around, around, around the, the garden. Around the garden. Okay. And then we also plant a crop in the garden between rows uh -huh. of maize, the smodium. That produces a chemical that pushes, pushes. Oh, the moth push, pull. pull. Oh. <laughs> and that technology yes, is what we are yes. recommending now. It's very good That's and cheap. I've told you we make a perimeter planting of the napier grass. Around the garden? Some people use two rows, some use even three. And we plant the cutting of napier into the soil. You can just push it in at a spacing of one foot from one plant to the other. To another. Between the two rows of maize, I put a row of the desmodium. desmodium. Still at a spacing of one foot from one plant to the other. Oh. And it is important that by the time you plant uh, the maize, the napier is and going. the smodium is already grown. These two crops are very useful to the farmers because the smodium and the <coughs> napier grass mm. can be used by, as feed for livestock. Please. Hey. What about the striga? Huh? Those beautiful flowers can this offer to ag? It's very can beautiful to one? attract uh, bees that do pollination. That is why it is so beautiful. <laughs> striga is a very serious problem in maize. And uh, <clears throat> striga is a, a weed. It's parasitic in nature. Okay. On its own, it cannot survive. It is attached to the roots of maize and gets nutrients from the maize plant. Did I tell you that each plant can produce to as high as 20,000 seeds? 20,000 seeds. Each single plant. <laughs> and the seeds can stay in the soil for up to 20 years. Uh, but you can still have a mechanism of checking it, pulling it out approach. before it flowers. But uh, legumes like a soya bean, granites, and beans, beans. Mm -hmm. produce a chemical that uh, Repel, repels or, or pushes. is not good for, for oh, it. For, oh. So we can use intercropping with the legumes. With the legumes. But fortunately, this modium has been proven to scare. It doesn't permit germination and the attachment of the, the striga on the maize at all completely. Is what we want. So if you use the smodium, the smodium. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you, you, are, you are killing striga, uh -huh. yes. you are scaring the, army, the fall armyworms, and you are feeding your livestock. Using the smodium. Using the smodium. 
People, we are not done with food. Peter has just started planting sweet potatoes, another crop to feed hungry children. But our expert from National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO, Rovinsa Nigesa, thinks a different variety. The orange-fleshed sweet potato is a much better option. These orange-fleshed sweet potatoes, they are very good because they are rich in vitamin A. And the vitamin A are very good for younger children, pregnant mothers, and lactating mothers. Yes, please. These vitamin A's, why do we need it in our bodies? Because they don't only help us to see well, they even help mm -hmm. in growth, especially for these children, now that you have many children here. 700. Vitamin A, you have 700 have of them. 700, yes. It also gives immunity to our bodies to resist the diseases, diseases, like pneumonia, like measles, which is common to children. As, as you give them portion, even give them uh, sweet potatoes, this is balancing their, 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 diet. Diet. their yeah. diet. It's like in Musoga here, mm. we are capitalizing on maize, mm. portion here and then mm. there. Mm. So if you grew them here and we gave them, then the better, because in their villages, it's basically this local type which is there. These orange fresh sweet potatoes, they are very tasty and they are resistant to diseases of these sweet potatoes. One of them, it's called Nasepot 8. The ones you, you, are, you are going to access easily today. That's eight. today. Wow. Today, today, today. <laughs> That's good news. <laughs> you some. Please, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Mm. And this Nasepot 8 yields 20 tons per hectare. Nasepot 8, when you plant, <laughs> after, after the four months, you can continue piecemeal harvesting for even eight months. It Al doesn't go bad in almost, the soil. Al actually, it's almost a year. Mm. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. You're covered. Mm. Please. And the, the other variety is called narrow spot one. That one also takes four months to mature. It's not like uh, these uh, local varieties. These ones, they take five to six months yeah, it's true. to mature. And at the same time, actually, they don't yield much. Mm. And they I are low yielding. The, yeah. Yeah. This narrow spot one yields 28 to 30 tons. Per hectare. Like, yeah. They are very high yielding. Wow. Okay, yes, so Lovisa, mm. uh, when you look at this and what you're talking about, is it the same way we plant? Is, it, is there any difference? Well, the method he has used of heaping mounds, mm. we can use when planting orange fresh sweet potatoes, mm. except the spacing, we plant in a line so that we can have one meter by one meter from one line to another, another line, line and from mm. one mound to another, another mound. mound, so that a farmer can have, get many mounds. Like in one hectare, you can get 4,444 mounds for mm -hmm. high yield. For high yields. Nice. Yes. So, our expert Lovinsa recommends that you plant three vines per mound in a triangle, two-thirds deep and at least 30 centimeters apart. So now it's time for the taste test. We peel, wash and steam our orange fleshed sweet potatoes. It takes about the same time to cook as the local varieties. Let's see which one Peter likes best. Very nice. Yes. This one is better. <laughs> <laughs> Peter likes the narrow spot one, pale yellow in color. Let's see what the children think. Which one do you like better? The white one. Why? Oh. Which is yellow, yellow in color. So you prefer which one? This one or the ones at home? This one. Oh, cool. <laughs> they really enjoyed it. They really enjoyed it. Immediately, before this rain gets, gets over, we need to plant as soon as possible. From what we have seen, Peter is doing a great job teaching because the children in this school are confident and happy. And we hope we gave him the knowledge to improve on his farming. But you know, farming is more interesting. Hmm? I'm sorry to mention that. It's more interesting than teaching. Do you know why? Because, you know, with the school, it's so demanding. So demanding, one, in terms of time, and in terms of input, in terms of money. But since I've taken it on, there's no way I can drop it. It's going to be easier, as long as farming takes off, given the new innovation is, teaching will be so much easier. 
So I think I see light that's ahead of it all. Ah, so Peter, yes, Agi. it's time for us to go. Please. And I'm we happy. hope you had a good time. Please, please, I'm happy that you've been here. Mm. We have enjoyed your stay. Ah. Oh, the mm. glory goes to, go to, to back to God. No worries, don't worry, you're going to be better. Please. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. No okay. Problem. We are humbled. Yes. yes. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. bye. Now you agree. What? You didn't give me a piece of your sweet potato. No, imagine it was for the kids. Ima imagine me again. Yeah, yes, yes, Peter. Mango. There are other kids. Loves. What kids? The kids, what? I got distracted. I forgot about you. Ah, you but, forgot about you. Always forget about me. But, Why don't you? Me, how come I don't forget about you? Like when? Ah. Yeah.